Hello, Big Tony. This is everybody. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we all know that uh, for some days now, uh, barely a week now, uh, Emeka Ike came on air and um, spoke about what happened between him and his ex-wife. The ex-wife has responded and the son has also come into the mix. Um, I don't want to go into who they right for this matter and who they wrong. Because anything will be a matter between husband and wife. Not really waiting outside that supposed to shook my put. Um, unfortunately, now they carry their matter come the outside world. So that's where people they shook my put. But be that as it may, I believe that um, there are many lessons that could be learned from this entire uh, affair or issue, so to say. First and foremost, it is very wrong for the kids involved in this entire thing to be introduced into the whole thing. I was not too excited about Chude interviewing the son with the mom. Uh, well, he said, uh, he made a disclaimer at the beginning that uh, uh, the mom tried to dissuade the son from granting that interview, but the son insisted. I, I, don't, I don't buy that kind of crap, man. Chude and the mom should have ensured that that young man does not step into the the, the, the studio to have that interview. Uh, because whether we like it or not, no matter what you want to prove, let us consider the mental health of that boy and the other kids involved in that entire relationship. Whether you like him or not, the things when don't happen between a Mekaike and a wife don't damage the children. The wife herself said it during the interview that we are a damaged people. She admitted that she's damaged, that the kids are damaged. Maybe the only thing that she also didn't admit is that the maker AK himself is also damaged. You know what I'm saying? So this entire thing has damaged the entire family. Father is affected. The mother is affected. The kids are affected. And the last thing you want to do is to provide another opportunity for the children to be damaged even further. And that's what an interview did to that boy. You think that the boy was happy doing that? I don't think so. People that are very sensitive will see that that boy was just doing that uh, out of um, frustration. And I do not believe that after granting that interview, he's happier that he had done something. I'm sure he's going to look at it somewhere down the line and wish he didn't do it. You know, the bottom line is, let us try and keep kids out of problems that are happening between their parents, especially problems that lead to divorce. If you look at the society today, most of the children, when they misbehave, when their pattern are not arranged at all, now children will come from broken homes. So the fact that they can come from broken homes is enough of an issue already. Now, for you to now damage the psyche and the the, the brain and the mindset of the Peking father by getting him or her deeply involved in the quarrel between the father and the mother is even a, a, a worse state to put that child in. So I beg you in the name of God. This is not just about Mika Eke and the wife. Anybody out there will get issues with your spouse. I beg, keep your children out of it. Keep your children out of it because the extent of damage that these things are capable of, you know, doing to children is something that you cannot imagine. Okay, now, if you look at the matter critically, you go see say a lot of things go wrong from the onset. For example, a maker AK wife or ex wife during the interview talks say, uh, a maker not let her work. Then in that same interview, she said, a maker opened a school for her to run. And I'm confused. Running a school to me is good business. I have a friend who's been running a school since 1996. And he has done creditably well. He has not only done well for himself, he has also helped other people set up schools. Uh, and the people are running the schools and they are doing well. This, my guy, has become like a consultant. If you want to set up a school because he has experience, he can guide you, set up the school for you, and help you run it for a while. And then when the school has taken off, he will back off and let you do your thing. So running a school to me is good business. But the issue here is that Emeka Ike's ex-wife wanted to be an actress and a model. That's what the problem is. So by setting up a school for him, Emeka was diverting her attention from what she wanted to do to something else. Now, Emeka has given reasons why 
he wanted her not to be a model and an actress. According to him, that would put them in the same industry and put them in the eye of the media and the eye of the public unnecessarily. Well, the thing when the guy they avoid don't happen now when marriage don't crash. So that media scrutiny and public scrutiny when they avoid, and they happen to do so. So what is the lesson that we can learn from that? Lesson is very simple. Do not coerce people to do what they do not want to do. And for the woman too, I'm sure she believed that if she got married to a maker at some point, she was going to use one magic to convince him to have a change of heart for him to do what she wanted to do. But it didn't quite work like that. It does not quite work like that. 99% of the time, it doesn't work like that. For what you want to come from, then they use left hand, learn how to, uh, then they use old age, learn how to use left hand. They're the born person left handed. So if a female who was 19 years old, had been pumped up to say, what I want to do is be a model or an actress. That's what she wanted to do. So a maker not supposed to believe saying, get one magic to convince them to just turn into a school proprietress overnight. All the years that she was running the school, it is obvious she was doing it against her will. That's not what she wanted to do. And that's why she was struggling with that. Because, like I said, running the school is lucrative business. So if she could not run it and make it lucrative, it's because... She was reluctantly doing that. That's not what she wanted. So, like I said, the lesson from there is do not force people to do what they do not want to do because they will not put uh, their all in it. And it does not only apply to spouses too. It applies to children. I know it is very common in Africa for parents to force their kids to read certain courses because you feel that course is what is best for the kid. But we are seeing the result in the society today. We have kids who read law, who are not practicing, who are musicians, who are comedians, and so on and so forth. So what's the lesson to draw from this? Allow your children read what they want to read. Allow them jack the course where they want jack. Let them be who they want to be. You don't understand. Not believe, say, you go feel forced speaking to read one course, then the picking of he go come dedicate himself to read the course, put all in mind. No, you're not going to do it with your mind. You go do it haphazardly. You go do it with half-hearted attempt. And you're not going to come out well in flying colors, so to say. So lesson number one, do not force people to read courses that they don't want to read in school. And lesson number two, do not force people to take up careers that they do not want to take up. And then lesson number three, do not have this impression that when somebody has made up their mind on what they want to do over time, because you are married to them, you are going to get them to change their minds. Like I said, they need to use old age, learn how to use left hand. Most of the time, things like career choices are things that people are obsessed about. Some of us got into the corporate world. I was there for nine years. When I got out of the university, I never wanted to be a nine to five person. But that became the option that was, you know, available to me in the 90s and I did it for nine years and um, I, I loved the job because the money was good but somewhere in between I was struggling with the job because that's not what I wanted to do and in the ninth year when I saw an opportunity for early retirement I took it up I've been doing my thing since then okay and the thing about that is sometimes that thing that you want to do may not be as rewarding as a nine to five job but somehow it gives you happiness so a maker Ike's wife was not happy running a school because that's not what she wanted to do. If she was a model and an actress, even if she was not making as much money as she was making running the school, she probably would have been a happier person. And that's what this whole thing is all about. So like I said again, do not force people to do jobs that they don't want to do. Do not force kids to read courses that they don't want to read. And for crying out loud, do not get your children involved in your divorce mess and all that. I, I, I shout out to Tiwa Savage. I saw a tweet um, a few months back by her ex-husband where she said, where he said something like, um, Tiwa Savage makes him look good. Apparently, Tiwa Savage takes care of the kid and she does that and makes the kid believe that it is the father that is contributing. That's how it should be, man. No matter what happened between you and your spouse or your ex-spouse, do not let your kids believe that uh, your ex-spouse is a demon or something. At the end of the day, if you are not careful, it's going to come back to haunt you. I can guarantee you that. I know a lot of mothers who, who got divorced 
spoke to their kids very poorly about their father. And somehow the kids get, got to grow up and became wiser and discovered that their mom was just manipulating them. And eventually they went to look for their dads. It has also happened to some dads who manipulated their kids against their mom and they got wiser when they grew up and they went to look for their mom. So it's both ways. I'm not just saying that it only applies to one particular sex. So sometimes you can spend a lot of years trying to engineer your kids against your ex-spouse. And before you know what they happen, when they grow up, their eye go tear. They say, because they remember, say, when they're young and they did the family, they, they see some kind of things when they need nothing process. But now they don't grow up. Their mind don't clear. They can't process the thing. They can't believe say, ah. Be like I say, mom, see, they play me since. Be like I say, pop, see, they play me since. Not be exactly what it happened. Eh? The guy, the hand. Because, me say, at that time, I be like 10 years old now. I see things for myself now. The picking eye go open. It will not turn against you and go and look for the same person that you have been, you know, demonizing for all the years. So let's be careful, guys. Let's be careful. Do not bring your kids into the mix. Should they? Shouldn't, shouldn't have interviewed that young man. For me, that's, uh, that, that, that's, that's a no no. That interview is going to damage that young man beyond the level of damage that he's been. Some of you will say, yeah, it was nice for him to let it out. But hey, come on, guys. Letting it out and the kind of backlash that he has gotten, uh, I don't think the young man deserved that. He didn't deserve that at all. Like I said, this issue is something that ought to have been handled behind the curtains, even between the, the guy and his ex-wife. That's the maker he came himself. It's not something that should have made it to the public, but it's here. Let's try as much as we can to manage it and ensure that the kids do not get involved. And um, the last thing that I wanted to say is that um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what makes a relationship thrive is understanding. If you are not ready to make some little sacrifices here and here to tolerate the excesses of the next person to you, then you are not ready to marry. Don't even go into it. So, as a matter of being so, I don't talk with it in my mind. So, if you're there out there and you believe, say, just like I talk, a maker, a key, and a wife, not supposed to bring their children into this matter. No tata for ya, ya. But if you're there and you believe, say, what I talk, not make sense. You are a salala.